Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Hilal Live. My name is Faraz Patel. We say jazakallah to you for staying with us. I'd like to thank my colleague Lukman Shadrach for starting off the show for us. Now, Colin Manachi will lead a new era for the ANC Youth League after he was elected the new president of the organization. He was elected unopposed on Saturday after being the only candidate to garner enough support to make it to the ballot through branch nominations. Now, the question arises as, uh, as to whether his le new leadership or this new leadership can address the wide-ranging youth problems while the, within the country, while also the role it will play within the motherboard. Joining me now to discuss this is political analyst Sandy Leswana. Mr. Swana, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for us and your viewers. All right, Mr. Swana, uh, Colin Malachi, uh, he's probably really the best that the ANC Youth League can produce at this moment. Would that be a fair statement? And listening to, of course, his press conference earlier on, I mean, can he really lead this Youth League into a new era? The era everyone's asking, the one or the golden era that was during the years of the 2000s, right up until, of course, uh, the expulsion of Julius Malema. Uh... I think I just want to also make a note that uh, people like uh, Colin uh, Malachi are now elected by whatever means into the position. Mm. That is not an indication that he is the cream of the crop mm. or the most uh, best qualified person for the position. But whatever processes that the ANC has hidden and visible have produced this leader. Now, at face value, looking at him and listening also to the press conference and also looking at his CV on the internet, there is nothing that says this is a star performer or anything like that. And I don't think he's even completed a three-year diploma uh, at a college anywhere. Uh, he's still in his formative intellectual stages and professional stages. So. Uh, so at face value, there's nothing really that says that we are now headed for a, a, uh, a period of superior performance. So I am not an, an anticipating superior performance right now from Colin Malachi and his team. Mr. Swana, the Youth League is meant to, of course, address many of the issues that the youth currently fa uh, face because they are the go-to point, especially the young voters within the African National Congress. Can they really address these issues, or are they just going to be there to, to, to have the lip service, but really no action to be done? The, in South Africa right now, the potential to be successful and address the youth issues exists. Let's start there. One of the popular issues that gets raised uh, among the issues uh, is the land issue, mm. agricultural issues, uh, land development issues, they're just a land issue in, in general. Now, if I was in the Youth League, I, I would go to the University of Western Cape and ask them for the research they've done and the proposals they've made, what should be done about the land issue. Uh, the issues of income inequality have been examined at great length at the UCT. And, 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 and some of the major intellectuals are actually local black people there in the Western Cape, the indigenous people of the Western Cape. So uh, you can go to certain places where a lot of these questions have been asked and answered and start to follow that advice, then you just have to focus on doing the political work around that. Now, the question will be, is Malachi and company wise enough and humble enough to actually go to where the correct knowledge and technical advice is already waiting for him and actually take advantage of that, uh, where it just needs to be given political impetus? Mr. Swana, when I watched the press conference earlier on, uh... I don't know. Maybe you can you can uh, maybe you can correct me on this. He, he he seemed like very militant in the way he, of course, spoke. Now I don't know whether he's appealing to the gallery or this is just the way Colin Malachi is. But if that's going to be the way he wants to be, and the mother body 
may look at him and say, well, listen, you need to calm down a little. But do you foresee something happening like that where they may have to just tell him, listen, calm down. A lot of your, a lot of the manifestos of the ANC maybe don't speak to what you are saying right now. And a lot of the policies that the mother body has may not speak to what you would like to emphasize with the Youth League. Yes, there is a view uh, of that that says to be militant, uh, there's a confusion between being militant mm. and being aggressive and even being revolutionary. And I will try to make a difference between all these things. The issue here is that the people, young people are unemployed, need, need intelligent, well thought out, practical strategies of how to get permanent jobs and sustainable livelihoods in South Africa. Now, if you were to get uh, on short notice, 4 million uh, young people employed, let's say within a space of two to three years, having full-time jobs and working, to me, I would regard that as revolutionary. I would say this is a real revolutionary now leading the youth. Uh, or, or even the ANC. Being revolutionary and militant is not about sounding aggressive and harassing people, but it is about producing the most innovative ideas that change life for the better, for the ordinary people. Uh, overthrowing the long-term mediocrity that has arrested the African National Congress since the, the Pulukwane Conference. That would be revolutionary to me. So that is the issue. And Malaji, like now they were saying that they want 50% uh, of the leaders uh, in the list going into the provincial list and the national list to be uh, young people below the age of 35. That is going to be a conflict around vested interests around there. It's already a starting point of a conflict. Yeah, I was going to bring that up because I, I, I don't know if I wanted to laugh or at the same time look a bit shocked because... Yeah, if if the current uh, leadership within parliament and legislature are made up of much right in saying that because they want to be there for as long as they are around. Yes. Uh, so so one of the, the issues that has arrested the politics of the ANC and in fact the politics of COPE has been that that group of Congress that was in the UDF and in the ANC in exile uh, believe that they have all the answers and the only thing that will remove them from positions is death. Really, they want to die in office, this guy. So it's not a scheme that says when I'm starting to be 60, 65, I want to start handing over automatically from my side. These guys want to be in their 70s and still in office, some headed for 80. Mr. Swana, the, the Youth League as it stands right now, every time a new leadership is, is elected, of course, we saw the one with uh, Colin Maine, uh, that was back in 2015. And then we have this new one. Yeah, we'll always have that comparison of the days of Fikile Mpalula, the, the Malusi Gikabas, and of course, the ones of the Julius Malemas of this world. H how does this current leadership you know, uh, 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 create its own legacy or create its own sort of path without being compared to the previous ones because it is difficult to try and escape from that shadow when the ANC was kind of in a golden era. Well, I'd say the ANC Youth League was kind of in its golden era. Yeah, I, I think uh, before the Pulukwane Conference, the ANC itself was in a, in a golden mm. era. Uh, so the, uh, the additional structures such as the Youth League and the Women's League were carried by the high economic growth and job creation and houses. I mean, somebody was saying during the Meggy era, for every shack built in South Africa, there were 10 RDP houses built. Mm -hmm. So it was a very aggressive period of development. So if you were in and around the ANC, you sort of looked good. Uh, in that period. But if you look at Kikaba, Kikaba himself and Balula, both of them, and, and Colin Maine, it was worse. Mm -hmm. These guys have got nothing that distinguishes mm -hmm. them. So they, they, they wrote uh, the mediocrity, let's call it that, in the youth league of the ANC is old. So this now new period is a period where 
People have got to say, forget what you know. Probably we need to get it to 50% of what we know and launch a new period of professional excellence in what we do as a party that is in power. We're not trying to destroy anything. We're not trying to overthrow anyone. We try to get our people out of poverty, out of sickness, disease, and ignorance. Mr. Swana, one final question. Uh, this new leadership of the Youth League, wants to convince voters, especially the young voters, that the ANC is still the party to vote for in 2024. Do they get it right or do the youth just say, we've had enough of you, it's time for us to choose a different destination? I think the, 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 the I look at the youth league, this youth league that we're talking about here, this leadership and, and the organization, which has been on holiday or on the hospital bed for eight years, <laughs> As someone who is joining the Comrades Marathon two hours after the, the, the runners have started running, I don't see them being a high impact factor in the 2024 election. Uh, the likes of Songhez or ZB, the EFFs of this world, and all these other fellows who've been out there for some time now, are going to be the voices that people will be listening to and to mobilize the youth of South Africa for the first time to consider themselves to be a major voting constituency is a task that is going to be difficult even for the EFF. Mr. Sandy Leswana, we'd like to say thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. That's uh, <laughs> Sandy Leswana, political analyst there, just uh, highlighting some of the key moments from that conference and going forward as to what will the ANC Youth League look like and will they be able to convince the youth that the African National Congress is still the party to vote for come next year in the national elections. After the break, I chat to Tola Kele Mganga, EWN Sports Anchor, about yesterday's absolute debacle at the Tsakani Stadium in Ikuruleni, where Banyana Banyana, the World Cup squad, was an absolute no-show in their friendly, their send-off game against Botswana. Do stay tuned.